of candies. I have the ingredients laid out here on what you will need to make these candies. You will need, I'll start with the chopped pecans. You will need chopped pecans, two cups per batch of candy that you make. I did these by hand. Um, you don't want to use whole because they're a little too big. And you can use a chopper to chop them. I found that sometimes it makes them a little too small, a little too powdery, and you don't really get the caramel taste in the candy. So I did these by hand, two cups per batch. You will also need some craft caramels. You can use the wrapped, I think they come in an 11 or 13 ounce bag, or you can use the caramel bits. Either one works. The caramel bits are easier. I just caught these on sale, so that's why I use these uh, this time. And I'll show you what those bags look like. On those and the caramel bits, they look like this. You will also need your almond bar or chocolate candy melts. Um, I have chocolate and I have the white because I do both. Any brand. But that's what you need and you need about one pack per batch that you want to make one pack of this per batch so it's about two cups of pecans per batch it's around 40 of this size caramels per batch and it's one pack of almond bar per batch you will also need milk doesn't matter what type 2%, but any type works. Two tablespoons of milk per batch. So you will need a tablespoon measuring spoon. You will also need a measuring cup, mainly, as you see, to measure your pecans. Two cups per batch. And you will need some trays. This is so that you can stick them in the refrigerator or the freezer to harden in between putting, before you put the chocolate on them. Um, I use a lot of trays, so you may need to borrow some trays from everybody if you plan on making a lot of them, but I do make a lot of batches. I do this for holidays, so um, they freeze well. You can put them in Ziploc bags, kind of like this, and they, when you get ready to take them somewhere, just unthaw them, take out what you need, unthaw them, and, and they're, they're really good. And you'll need a double boiler, or a homemade double boiler, which is what I have. You just need a pot that you can put some water in the bottom of and also uh, a bowl that you can put on top that doesn't sink all the way into the double boiler because you want that to just sit on top of the water so that it heats it up and doesn't burn it. So we are going to start with putting some water into the bottom of our double boiler. Do that. You want to get enough that it's going to touch the bottom of your bowl, but you don't want too much that it's going to overflow when it starts heating up and boiling. You probably, throughout the process, if you make several batches, you'll probably have to refill this water because it does evaporate as you're boiling. That's pretty good. You will see I have my stool in here because you sit in front of the stove a lot, so I will be using that. So I've got my double boiler with the water in it on top of the stove. I'm going to turn the heat on to start heating up that water. I'll start with it medium. This is an electric stove set around five. Move this to the way. that I make since I make so many I melt all the caramels first it's a little easier on cleaning and then when I'm finished doing all my caramels then I'll clean all my double boiler and then that's when I'll start melting melting the chocolate I'm going to count out 40 of these
that's for one batch. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of milk. This is a two cup measuring cup. We're going to measure out two cups of pecans. Have those ready. Looks good. So that's two cups. So once my caramel start melting, we'll add these pecans in and stir them in. Show you what this looks like just caramel and milk on the double boiler and we'll just wait for that to melt we are starting to melt so we're fixing to be getting ready to add our pecans in Melted caramels. Oh, yum. You may need one of these because this gets a little hot. Got melted caramels. Now we're going to add our two cups of pecans in. Starting to look good. We're going to stir them up. Mix the caramel and the pecans together real well. to scoop them into individual turtles onto a tray. sticky anymore. This is one batch. So it's not like baking cookies or anything. They can be very close together. That steam will burn me along. I'm going to scoop this and I'm going to cut that oven down a little bit. Not the oven, but the burner. Since we're melted, I just want to kind of keep it boiling. So I'm going to cut it down a little bit. step one for every batch that I'm going to make before I move on 
to just coat these with chocolate. I'll coat them all with chocolate in the next step. just seems to cool them off quicker and that'll get rid of the stickiness and kind of harden them a little bit and cool them down so that when we melt our chocolate they'll be ready to dip in the chocolate yum 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 in the freezer they go one batch made about 35 turtle turtles take two One batch made about 35 turtles, so just if you need an estimate on how much you get out of one batch, around 35, give or take a little bit for one batch. We got all of our caramels melted and pecans mixed in and um, in little droplets, and they are in the freezers cooling, hardening, and getting less sticky. We have cleaned our double boiler and so now we are ready to make our melt our chocolate That's our next step so I'm going to start with the regular um, chocolate the brown chocolate and flavor and we're going to put these in there. If, if you're making more than one batch and you have all your caramels melted in there it really doesn't matter how much chocolate you melt at a time um, it just takes about one block per batch, but if you're doing more than one batch, since you're doing all the chocolate at one time, you can throw in more than one of these blocks and just let it melt and just keep dipping. They're really hard to break. We know I've got a lot. Start melting away. I have put two packs of the chocolate in here. So I'm going to melt two. And I can add some more once this goes down some. I just didn't want to overfill my double boiler. Didn't want to mess. Try to reduce the mess. While our chocolate is still melting, I pulled out one of the first batches that I made out of the freezer. Um, I'll dip those first since they've been in the freezer the longest. And you can probably, you can break them off as such, or if you don't want to break them off with your hands, you can also use a spatula and kind of push them up like this to, just to loosen them from the tray. They've had plenty of time in the freezer, so they're kind of hardened. I mean, they're still a little sticky, but they've lost their real stickiness. That one didn't want to come up. I'll loosen them all up. As such, so that they'll be loose when you get ready to dip them. Chocolate has started to melt. We have a lot melted. There's still some chunks in there, but we're going to start dipping. Got our tray out with the first ones we're going to dip. You might want some of these because I like to put them in there and use these to pull them out and put them back in the tray. And of course, we'll need our spoon to stir this chocolate up every so often. 
I'm going to give you an up close view of me dipping the first one. We'll just drop it in there, coat it real good, and you want to let the excess run off or you'll end up with a big glob of it on your tray. But make sure it's coated good. And then we'll just come over here and we'll set it down there and grab another one. Drop it in. Let it run off. We'll continue doing that until we have all of them coated. I um, counted all of my caramels that I made, and I have 219 of them, so I have a long way to go. I have 219 of them, but I'm not doing them all in the milk chocolate. I'm doing some in the white chocolate, too. So I'll kind of divide them up. Uh, sometimes I do more of this chocolate because it seems to me like more people like this chocolate but um, I'll do quite a bit of the white too You don't want your caramels to heat up after being cooled off because they'll get sticky again. So I try to quickly go through these. If you move fast enough, you can drop a couple of them in there at a time. As long as you get them out quick enough. to cool and let that chocolate harden on there. Conceal. In the freezer they go for cooling. Now we're gonna switch gears and we are going to open the white chocolate and break it up and we are going to put it in the double boiler to start melting so we can make our white turtles. We've got our white chocolate in the double boiler. We are gonna let that melt. We'll follow the same process with making our white chocolate turtles as we did with our milk chocolate turtles. I won't video and take you through that whole process again because it is the exact same process. The only difference is the color chocolate we're using. This is a tray of the dipped white chocolate. We have trays and trays. There's four trays right there. 
two trays right there. Plus we have some in another freezer. But they've been in the they've been in a freezer for a while, so now they're ready to come out. You can use the spatula if they need it to break them off of the tray. And now they're ready to either serve or put in a bag or container and freeze for later. Your choice. I saw some notes. Uh, you want to know if I have any helpful tips or hints for you? Let me see. That's what these are for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, do all the caramel part first if you're making more than one batch. Melt all your caramels, mix all your pecans, use plenty of trays, scoop all of that, get it in the freezer. Instead of melting a batch of caramels, scooping that, putting it in the freezer, cleaning your double boiler, melting chocolate, dipping that, cleaning your double boiler, then melting caramels again. Instead of that, do all of the caramel stuff first. Then do all of the chocolate stuff. Saves a little time because this is a long process. One batch makes around 35 turtles. Um, give or take a little bit. Could be a little more. It also depends on the size that you make the turtles. And allow yourself time. Allow If you're making multiple batches, allow yourself plenty of time. It has taken me most of the day. I probably started on this around 12.30 p.m. It is now 6.30 p.m. and I made about six batches. So if you're making a lot of batches, allow yourself a day to do it because it takes time. Um, when you are melting your caramels, if you find that you're in, mix your pecans in and when you're scooping onto your trays, if you find that your caramel and pecan mixture is a little runny, you can do one of two things. You can add you a few more pecans and mix it in there, or the next time you can cut back on your caramels. Because like I said, one bag has about 40 caramels in it. Um, some bags may have a little more, some bags may have a little less. It's around 40. Um, so sometimes you may end up with a little more caramel mixture in a bag, sometimes you may have a little less. So just if you find that it's a little runny, just add you a few pecans to it or cut back on the number of caramels that you use. Um, when you, after you finish your caramel and pecan mixture and dipping and scooping and you get ready to clean your double boiler, use really hot water to clean your double boiler and clean your utensils, that helps. Caramel is so hard to clean and that helps get the, melt the caramel, soften it up so that you can clean it off. So use really hot water. That might be a given, but I thought I'd throw that in there. Also, <laughs> you may have noticed in my process while I was doing it, it's a messy job. Making turtles is a messy job. Chocolate gets everywhere, caramel gets everywhere, everything gets sticky, your utensils get sticky, just be ready for it. You want to make turtles, it's going to be a messy job. And I think that is it for my tips. Um, if you liked this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you follow us along. We share vacations, uh, unboxings, DIYs, do-it-yourselfers, do-it-yourselves, do it how-tos, and anything else that we think that you'd like, you would enjoy. So give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you for watching.